On this comment of axial force, I have so much people say that drills have less axial force than an impact does. Well, it has less axial force on this end. More axial force on this end exerting into your body. Your body must exert more effort and more energy to control the drill. But it has less axial force there. This here has more axial force here, but in short controlled bursts, therefore resulting in less axial force here into your body. This is why these can be operated one-handed, and in many cases, these need to be operated two-handed for larger stuff. But you can operate these one-handed quite easily. In that. But that's the thing. You still have to put more force. You still have to hold this thing in. These things here, you can hold them really light really light you don't have to exert any force to control that so yes those have more axial force on the output but not on the input where these have more axial for force on the output than the input so when you're talking about feedback into your body the impact has less axial axial force and the drill has more and that's the thing is with the impacts, you don't have to choke them. You can hold them soft and gentle and light and dry fasteners. Where these things here, when you start getting into larger fasteners. Now, I'm not saying that the drill is not the right tool. The drill for large fasteners is going to be a better tool over the impact. The impact for small fasteners and fasteners that you don't want to cam out is going to be a better solution. The drill right now in current time is the more versatile tool and more capable because it can drive the small fasteners, it can drive the large fasteners, but it also comes down to fatigue. The drills are larger, they are heavier, and they most of the time for the same run time on an impact, you gotta go to a little bit larger of a battery which way adds weight to it. If I was to put that battery on this drill, that battery would die faster and it would drive less faster than that amp impact would with that little battery. And that's where the bonus of impact come in. Are they as fast as a drill? No, but remember, I keep reiterating, everything has a speed limit. These impacts put the fastener in at the right speed and also give you more control over that speed with less input. So it all comes down to what you're doing. Is one better than the other? Yes and no. Each one has their plus and minus. Depends on what you're doing what industry you're working in, and what you're going to be use it for. But I'm always going to tell people, buy a drill first before you buy an impact. Learn how to use a drill. Use, learn how to operate a drill. Learn how to do the job with the drill. Then go to the impact, unless you're just doing installations. If you're doing installations, get a little impact. Boom. Done. Laughing. Drill. If you're in woodworking or construction, get the drill first. Master the art of the drill. Then go to the impact. But this will be, have more value as a first investment than that does. Because this is more versatile. But each one has its pluses and minuses. Not one is better than the other. And that's just realities. Okay? So, as for axial force, yeah, that's a little bit more better explained. But buy a drill first before you get an impact. Or if you're going to buy a kit, buy the kit. But these are just little, little, little things that I'm just going to talk to you guys about. And the same comes with same with the automotive industry. If you're a mechanic and you're in automotive, not heavy duty, the heavy duty industry, you're going to want to invest in a high, in a mid torque, at least a mid torque to start with. But I'm going to tell you, like, because like the high torque you don't need right away. You can break those bolts with a breaker bar and stuff like that. But the mid torque is going to get you a lot farther. In the automotive industry. Get yourself a small, small, low, like 200 foot pound torque kind of gun for assembly and disassembly because this is going to work out a lot better. This is going to be a better investment first. The, like a small gun like this is going to be a better investment over a big gun because the stuff that the big gun does, you can do with the breaker bar. But this thing here is going to give you the speed that you need, the versatility that you're going to need for the light automotive industry. Getting into tight spaces taking bolts off without breaking them installing them without breaking them uh, and that so in automotive industry start off with with, with a nice little little compact lower power tool and none of that that's going to allow you to learn how to finesse the tool 
without taking the risk of breaking stuff and then move into a bigger gun. But in the heavy duty industry, start with a mid torque and then, then, then go up into your higher torques. But automotive industry, smaller ones, in carpentry and construction, go with the drill first and then get the impact because the impact does have its place, does have its advantages and stuff like that. And even in the construction industry, do invest in a mid torque wrench and adapter for 7 16 bits because it will come in clutch in a lot of cases and a lot of scenarios. And there'll be a lot of times where you're going to need that extra extra oomph because it's gonna because they're gonna you're gonna run the stuff that the drill's not gonna do. But anyways, yeah. And like it just comes down to like how much power do you need to start off with? So carpentry construction, get a drill first. Automotive, get a small compact, lower power tool, get used to working with it. All the bigger stuff that's stuck and tight, you can use a breaker bar for and and then and then eventually work your way up but this is going to be more valuable to start with than a, high, a big heavy duty gun because that big heavy duty gun is not going to bring you as much value as something like this does for disassembly and reassembly and move your way up in the heavy duty industry a mid torque is going to do 90 percent of everything that you need it to do and for the other 10 percent, you can use a breaker bar to break stuff free and then get in but when starting an industry, these are like in these two industries, these are gonna want what you're gonna want. If you're an HVAC and uh, or or electrical work, small installation tools like a little impact or something like this or something like this is gonna come in really clutch. If you're a cabinet maker and you do cabinet work and stuff like that, you don't need to buy a monster. Buy subcompacts. Buy subcompact tools. If you're into finishing work, they're lighter, they're smaller, they're more compact, and they're more versatile in the finishing carpentry industry. But yeah, that's just my view and opinion on what of these you should buy first for each industry that I am familiar with. So I'll catch you all on the flip side. Bye.